This program comes to you compliments of the Tobago Inspirational Network. To support this and other programs, we encourage you to give to TIN. Contributions can be made at any First Citizens Bank at account number 203-4679. We thank you for your support. Good morning and welcome again to the program, Times of Refreshing. I am your TV host, Minister Sherla Waldron Joseph, and it's indeed a privilege being here with you another day. But before we meditate on God's word, we always take the opportunity to acknowledge the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let us pray. pray. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks. Mighty God, we give you glory. Great God, we give you honor. We thank you, God, because this is the day that you would have made. And indeed, today we rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you, O oh God, for spared and kept lives. We thank you, O oh God, because we are still in the land of the living. And for this, we greatly rejoice. It's indeed a privilege being alive in this time and this era. Yea, God, we thank you for your hand that is upon our lives, great God. And as we we are about to meditate on your word today. We pray, great God, that the Holy Spirit will come down and bring clarity. We pray that the third person of the triune Godhead, the one that you would have sent to comfort and to counsel and to lead us into parts of all truth, will come down today and bring clarity to your word. I pray even now, God, that the people will not only be hearers of your word but they would also be doers our ah, God and we will take your word our ah, God and we will meditate upon it therein will you make our way successful and you will indeed make our way prosperous so mighty God we commit this program today into your hands and we ask you God that you will have your divine way today in Jesus name amen 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 my topic for today is, Oh, that I may know him. And it's taken from Philippians chapter 3, reading from verses 4 to 10. Hallelujah. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcise the eighth day, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ? Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Hallelujah. And that is Paul speaking. Oh, that I may know him. The Hebrew word for know is genosko, which means to come to know, to gain or receive knowledge of, to comprehend. The Merriam-Webster meaning of know is one, to perceive directly, to have practical understanding of, to be cognizant of. What Paul was saying in the scripture is that he wanted not to just know about Jesus 
through readings or from a friend, but rather he wanted to have an up close and personal relationship with Jesus. He wanted to know him. He wanted to gain and receive knowledge. He wanted to comprehend who this man Christ Jesus was. That is what he was saying this morning. He said, oh, that I may know him. He said, oh, this was Paul, the righteous Paul, the man who would have persecuted Christians. The man that he was, he was a, had an encounter on the road to Damascus, that Paul. He said, though I might have confidence in the flesh, he said, I am in a position that I could tell you. He said, if you are talking about somebody, you need to refer to me, he says, because I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. He said, I am of the tribe of Benjamin. He said, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. And as touching the law, I'm a Pharisee. It's as though you are saying he was more than qualified to know Christ Jesus. He said, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is of the law, blameless. He was literally saying, if anybody was qualified to have knowledge of and to come to gain knowledge of this man, Jesus Christ, it was me. And then he came in verse 7 and said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss. Paul recognized that knowing Jesus was more than he had. Yes, he was a Pharisee. And yes, he was a Hebrew. And yes, he was circumcised the eighth day. And yes, he was from the stock of Israel. But knowing Jesus Christ called for more than that. It called for more. And he came to a place where he recognized that after he had all these things and after he would have learned at the feet of Gamaliel, he was truly educated. He had it all. The Bible said, he said, what things were gained to me? The things that I think I have and the qualification that I think I possess. He said, today, I count them lost for Christ. He said, they mean nothing to me because my true desire is to know Jesus Christ. He said, I count them lost. And I'm speaking about a man who was, who was well qualified. When you talk about a qualified person, if you talk about quali being qualified according to the law, he was qualified. And if you speak about qualified according to secular qualification, yes, he was qualified. But in verse 7, he said, what things were gained to me. Those secular things that I would have amassed to myself and all the titles that I think I have, they are nothing. What is more important than that is coming to know Jesus Christ. He said, I count them loss. And he continues. He said, yeah, doubtless, I count all things but loss. Why? For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. He said, I count them lost or the excellency, excellency, sorry. He said, because all my desire is to know this Jesus. That's my desire. He said, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And we all know the meaning of dung. Dung is fecal matter. And this is Paul saying, the thing that will come from the animal, that fecal matter. He said, I have lumped all my attainment and I count it but dung that I may win Christ. Paul came to a place that he understood that it was more than secular education. It was more than diplomas and bachelors and degrees and your masters. It's more than that. He understood that it took more than that. He said, I count them but dung. He said, I count them but loss. 
He said, all I want to do is to know Jesus Christ and to have a closer relationship with him. He understood that it took more than his secular training. He said, and be found in him, verse 9, not having my own righteousness. Paul also came to the point where he understood that knowing Jesus was more than having his own righteousness. The Bible declares that our righteousness is as filthy rags. We have no righteousness of our own. Our righteousness is through Jesus Christ. So the Bible said, he said, and be found in him not having my own righteousness. So one, it was not about his secular training. It was not about his genealogy. It was not about his lineage. It was not about his own righteousness because truly we have no righteousness of our own. Hallelujah. And he spoke about which is of the law. He came to another recognition that is the righteousness of the law couldn't allow him to know Jesus Christ. The Bible declares that the law was a schoolmaster. And when I think of a schoolmaster, I think of a disciplinarian. I think of somebody with rod in hand that came to dis di dispatch discipline. He said the law, he said it's which is of the law. So Paul also came to the point that he recognized that knowing Jesus Christ was more than being qualified in the matters of the law. Because Paul was a law man. He knew the law, the Bible said he persecuted Christians. But he came to a point that he recognized it was more than the Mosaic law. It was more than keeping the law. He said, which is of the law, but that which through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God. Hallelujah. Today is more than that. And he continues to say, that I may know him. That I may know him. Remember, the Hebrew meaning is to come to know, to gain or receive knowledge of. He said that I may know him, I, Paul, may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. It was more. He said, I want to know this Jesus. And more than that, I want to know about the power. When Jesus Christ died and on the third day he rose again, the Bible said he rose with power. He said, I want to know about the power of his resurrection. This great Jesus that went into hell and took the keys and said, this does not belong to you. The Bible said he took the keys of death and hell and he declared it is finished. He said, I want to know this Jesus. He recognized that he had everything, but the greatest thing that was missing was his knowledge, his knowing, his, the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm here to say today that it's more and much more important that we know him. Jesus didn't die for religion. It's not about where you attend. It's about your relationship with the man Christ Jesus. Paul said, I want to know him. I want to know. I, I want to have a personal relationship. And that is what God is seeking after in this day. He's seeking that his people be drawn closer to him. That we have an up close and personal relationship. Some of us, we, we know God from afar off. We know God through the eyes of somebody else. But God is calling us in this time to have an up close and personal relationship. Like Paul, our desire should be, oh, that I might know him. Oh, and the power of his resurrection. Paul understood that he took more than his secular training. 
It took more. Sometimes we put all our emphasis on our worldly titles and our worldly attainment. But I'm saying to you, if you would have attained everything in this world and you don't have Jesus, you are in trouble with a capital T. We need Jesus. Paul said, after all, after all, I have it all according to the law. I'm still lacking. There's something missing. And I'm speaking to somebody today. You have it all, but you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's something missing. We were made to worship God. And whenever we are not in that atmosphere, we are not in that place, there is a God, there is an empty feeling that we experience. We have it all. We, are, we have education and we have a nice house and we have money in the bank and we drive a fancy car. But still there is a longing and there is a desire. Wow, what am I longing for? Let me inform you that you are longing after true relationship with Jesus Christ. All the other accolades have no meaning if you don't have Jesus. Without Jesus, you are nothing. Today, I want to encourage you that we, we put Jesus first place. Paul understood that. It was more than his own righteousness. You meet people and you try to speak to them and it's like, I am good. I, I, I don't kill. I, I don't do anything. I don't commit any sin. But I'm saying we have no righteousness of our own. The Bible said we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We all have come short of the glory of God. That is why Jesus declared, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. We all have sinned. We have no righteousness of our own. The Bible declared our righteousness is as filthy rags. We have no might of our own. We can't change ourselves. We need to come to the great Jehovah. He's the only one that could put a broken life back together again. He's the only one that could heal a broken heart. Paul understood that. He said, I had it all, but there was one thing missing, and it was my relationship with this man, Christ Jesus. I was still empty. I was void. And the Bible said, Paul on the road to Damascus, he was touched. He had to become blind in order to see. This Jesus had an encounter with him. And from that time, Paul began to blaze a trail. He had a relationship. He began to know who is this Jesus. Because his, his task was to persecute Christians. He didn't understand what he was doing. And the Bible said from then on, he became a messenger for Jesus. Why aren't you becoming a messenger? God is looking for people to carry his word. The Bible said the laborers, there are few. The harvest is plenty, but they that would labor in the vineyard for Jesus, there are few. He's calling you. It's more. That is why you are not happy. You, you are, you're missing the key element, which is Jesus Christ. Paul said, oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Let us go to Galatians 1, 13 and 14. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that I may know him. Galatians 1. 13 and 14. Thank you, Jesus. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. This is Paul again speaking. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. This is Paul speaking. He said, I was zealous in the traditions of my fathers. 
And I know I'm speaking to somebody today. You're not, you don't have a true relationship with Jesus Christ. You're continuing the tradition. I'm calling you. Paul said, I was exceedingly zealous. I didn't have a relationship with Christ. I was going after the traditions of my fathers and my forefathers. And some people tell you that. I am this because my grandmother was that and my great-great-grandmother was that. But truly, they don't have a relationship. It's just a formality. It's just a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He said, I went after it all. He said, in time, for you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. How that beyond measure... That is how he's describing what he was doing. I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. This is the same Paul. There is nothing that God can't do. You have not gone too far that God's hand cannot reach you. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but God is calling you up. He's calling you higher. You have been made for more. Where you are is not where you're supposed to be. He said, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals. He was a big boy. He said, being more exceedingly zealous. Hmm? Of the traditions of my father. Let's quickly jump to Acts 8 verse 3. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Acts 8 verse 3. Thank you Jesus. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women and committed them to prison. It's just a synopsis of who Paul was. And this Paul has come to a place that he has said, Oh, that I may know him. I've had it all. I've done it all. The Bible said he made havoc of the church. And he committed men and women to prison. He found joy in doing that. That's before he had an encounter with the man Christ Jesus. He said, I am that Paul. Hallelujah. Verse, and verse chapter 9 verse 1. He said, and Saul, who was before, he was Saul, and then when he was converted, he became Paul. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. And this is where he had an encounter. If you read on, he would have had the encounter on the road to Damascus, where Jesus himself spoke to him. He said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Hmm? He had an encounter. The Bible said he saw a light from heaven and he had an encounter. The Bible said in verse, and he said, why art thou Lord? Sorry, who art thou Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And if you go on reading, you will see where he had an encounter. The Bible said he was made blind in order to see. Today, I want to encourage you. You need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It supersedes religion. It supersedes secular training. It supersedes your own righteousness, which we don't have any of. Today, I'm encouraging you. To seek after a relationship. Paul said, oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. He said, all that I would amass, all that I would have gained, he said, I counted loss. He said, I counted but dung, fecal matter, all to know, only to know this great man. For the excellency of the knowledge of knowing Christ Jesus. Let me encourage you today. Surrender your life to this Jesus. Give him your whole life. He wants all of you. Before I close, let me take the opportunity to pray for you. Father, we give you thanks today. Great God, we thank you for your word. 
We thank you, God, because we saw that Paul had it all, but yet he was missing the main ingredient. Our God, I pray today, even as your people view, my God, that they will truly surrender. My God, is not about our secular training. It's not about our secular accolades and our secular titles. But my God is about true and meaningful relationship with you. Hey God, we pray God that the spirit that was upon Paul, that he wanted to know more of you, will cover your people in the name of Jesus. Yea God, they will truly surrender. Father God, they will come out from religion and begin to seek after a relationship with you God. Our Father, I commit the people into your hands today God. I commit to be Ego and Trinidad, mighty God. Father God, I pray that your angels will continue to surround the borders of our twin island. Holy Ghost, I decree salvation will go into every village in the name of Jesus. Yea, God, and it will encounter young men, old men, young people, God, senior citizens. Yea, God, and they will truly surrender their lives to you. Mighty God, we thank you for your word today. And I ask you, God, to bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I am Minister Sherla Waldron Joseph. And it was indeed a privilege being here with you another day. But until we meet again, let me extend the peace of God to you and to your household in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.